Hey everybody, this is Alchemista. This is once again Trek Online, Rise of the Red Shirt. And uh, this week we will be beginning a short sequence of Foundry missions before getting back to the main Romulan storyline. Uh, these Foundry missions feature a specific character who has gone on to become a canon mem part of the Stowe universe. And uh, that the first mission up in that lineup is... To Helna and back, and I think it's by Havraha, but I'm not certain. Let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, let's see. Hello? There we go. Yes, to Helna and back by Havraha. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a bit spoilery, so I'm not going to read the description. Captain, we have an urgent matter of security to discuss. Ensign Helna, the Waglinde's cartographer, left for a scheduled shore leave four days ago. She was supposed to check in, but she never did. Honestly, she's a personal friend of mine, sir. I know her. She wouldn't break protocol, not even for a vacation. I'm concerned, and I'd like to request that we check in on her, just to be sure. She left her vacation to Ryza, in the Sirius Sector Block. I suggest we start there. We'll probably have to beam down and search for her on foot, since she's not answering our calls anyway. Except... I'm not sure... And of course, it didn't make it primary. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I think the not answering calls may be a reference to Star Trek V. Like, uh, there's a scene in Star Trek V where Kirk is asking, where, uh, they land a shuttlecraft next to the site where Kirk's been camping with, uh, Spock and McCoy, and he asks them why they haven't been calling him, and, uh, Uhura produces his communicator and says, You didn't bring your communicator with you. And he just stands there and goes, No, I wonder why. Um, maybe it has... Maybe that's a reference to that? I'm not, I'm not certain. But anyways, we're back in Star Trek Online. And uh, there's been a ton of stuff going on. A ton of stuff uh, involving Season 4. Uh... uh why, don't, why, don't, why don't I start with the good stuff first? So... There's going to be a new... Uh, people, ever since the me first mention of the DOF system, people have been clamoring for an app. You know, for for an iPad or iPhone app to uh, that would allow them to interface with the DOF system and basically do their DOFing on the go. And would, uh, you know, it would basically make it so they, they could just, like, do their DOFing wherever they wanted, whenever they wanted. They could just... Uh, they were, they're on a long car trip, you know, they can just, like, check their DOFs, you know, stuff like that. People have been clamoring that for that for the longest time. Uh, Cryptic is preparing to release the first public version of the Stow app. Uh, this app has a desktop, iPad, and an iPhone version. Obviously, I myself don't have any iOS devices. I personally think iOS is shit. But I have a desktop computer, and I'll definitely be making use of that Stow Gateway, as they call it. But there's no DOF functionality in it. It's really, it's literally just you open it up, and you can look at what your character has equipped right now, and that's all. Uh, it's really super bare bones. Um, so, uh, so the bright side, you're getting that app. The down the the downside. It's not functional yet. It's it's literally just hey, look at your character. I could just log in and do that. You know, if I wanna if I want a quick loading app, it's because I don't just want to lo look at my character without loading Stow. I want to do something. You know, I w I want to like work on my DOFs. I think you might be able to check the status of your assets. Uh, how much Zen you have, how many energy credits, the various slathering of marks that are available in the game. But uh, as for actual functionality, I don't think the game, I don't think the, the Stow Gateway, as they call it, has any. What would be nice is if they integrated this into the launcher. 
uh, in the PC version, if there was some kind of launcher integration where you could start up the Stow Gateway and start the game up from there, that would be cool. Uh, but as it stands, eh, it's pretty looking, but there's not much reason to download it yet once it's released because it, it's not functional at all. Moving on from that, there's going. They've been announcing the with the impending release of season seven next month, and with the uh, season seven stuff starting to roll into Tribble, uh, I ha I've been told uh, into the hive the st you know into the hive the special task force we've been waiting for since 2010 is finally on Tribble and it's a ground only STF, and I've been told it's a bit of a cluster frinks, but um. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. I do, I do plan on running into the Hive uh, before its release, just to show off. Just Because I, I haven't heard good things about it. <laughs> I haven't at all. In fact, and I'd like to point this out, the premise of In the Hive is kind of fatally flawed. Uh, the point of In the Hive is you are invading the Borg Unicomplex while the Queen is... Pre it, it's Return of the Jedi. Many Bothans died to bring us this information. The Emperor's on the Death Star. It's like that. The Borg Queen is at the Unicomplex, and you're going to invade the Unicomplex and inject a virus into it. My problem with it is this, is that this has to be... is, is that this has got to be a reference to the ending of Greater Than the Sum. Uh, Greater Than the Sum is a book in the Star Trek Expanded Universe. Uh, it's a, it's a, one of the TNG relaunch books. It's a build-up to the big Borg event, like uh, the big Borg crossover event that happened with Star Trek Destiny. Uh, and it's just this bit part of like this major build-up. The expanded universe have been making to it across various continu across various continuities. Well, it's the same continuity, but across various novels in the same continuity: the Excalibur, Deep Space Nine relaunch, TNG relaunch, Titan, etc. So, the Borg attack a planet, and uh, they're they're trying to f like the Starfleet vessel is trying to figure out what the hell to do. So this uh, brash security officer, he was previously a member of the, uh, he, pre he was previously the security officer aboard the Enterprise, or the tactical officer, my bad. He was previously the tactical officer, uh, the new tactical officer, uh, post-nemesis of the Enterprise E. Uh, he was, f but he left because he was fed up with uh, Picard, basically being Picard, um, he, he was fed up with Picard, Picard's tendency to screw the rules, I'm doing what's right. So he requested a transfer off of the Enterprise, and now he's on this ship, and he volunteers for what's basically a suicide mission to take uh, this virus uh, into the Borg, in, onto the Borg ship. And it's basically the only defense Starfleet has against the Borg that they know is going to work. And what this is, is it's basically a shape uh, encoded into, like, uh, it's kind of hard to describe. It, it's like this liquid, it's like this uh, hypo spray full of, like, I don't know if it was nanites or some kind of liquid, but coated into the nanites or the liquid, what, or what have you, somehow coated into it was this shape that was impossible. Uh, it, like, this shape posed, like, this impossible mathematical equation that the Borg would constantly try and solve but they would constantly fail, and they the, and they devote ever more processing power to trying to solve it. But it was deliberately impossible. Eventually, they just fry themselves out. Is the idea, and it had worked already in the novel once on a small scale. Um, Hugh did a kamikaze attack with it on a rogue on a Starfleet ship that had been assimilated and had gone rogue. Long story. Um, so, they carry a hypo loaded with this virus on board, and they are immediately slaughtered. Uh, they die within moments, uh, because the Borg at this point don't give a shit about assimilating them anymore. They just want to butcher everyone, because they're sick of the Federation screwing up their stuff. 
So, the Borg slaughter them, they kill the shit out of them, and the last thing Lebenzen sees, that, that's his name, Lebenzen, uh, the tactical officer's name, uh, the last thing he sees is the Borg taking the hypo, dropping it at a station, scanning it, and realizing that it is something harmful that they were trying to inject, and thus developing an offense against it, completely negating Starfleet's one uh, effective weapon against the Collective. Things get worse from there. The point I'm trying to make here is that the whole, the entire premise of uh, Into the Hive has not only been done before, but it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. It wasn't even done against a Unicomplex. It was a single cube, and the tactical team that got beamed aboard to do this who knew they were probably going to die doing so anyways. Remember, these people were going to their deaths, basically. They knew they were screwed. They're only... But they were determined to make sure the Borg were just as screwed as they were before they were finally taken out. Or assimilated. Um, you know, it's just this elite... This, tac this squadron of dudes just get completely demolished within moments board boarding a Borg ship to do this thing. So that's just something that bothers me about Into the Hive is it's kind when you're cribbing from the expanded universe to resolve the Borg conflict you need to go back to the writing board because it doesn't really sound very satisfying. I've read this book before it turned out really bad it turned out damn near apocalyptically bad for the Federation. Um, like that, like within, like the immediately after after that chapter, uh, you're seeing it goes to a scene in in the conference lounge of the Enterprise E where people are bursting into tears because they're watching the Borg show up and literally glass the entire surface of a planet because they're tired of even trying to assimilate the Federation anymore. They just want the Federation gone. And not just the Federation, the Romulans, the Klingons, they want the entire Alpha Quadrant just wiped clean. Did somebody just... No, they didn't. That's just the sound, ambient sound. I thought someone had pinned me for a moment. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. If you want to get in touch with me, send me an in-game mail, because, yeah, I do a lot of recording, and people have been pimping me a lot lately. Um, but, yeah. there that, That's my beef with Into the Hive. It, it feels like it lacks any kind of dramatic impact, considering they've been building to the destruction of the Borg Collective, or the defeat of the Borg Collective, for two years now? So you're going to resolve the whole thing in a STF with barely any plot? You're going to resolve it by cribbing from the expanded universe? That's not... That's pretty bad. That's pretty lame. But then again, storytelling is not something that's cryptic strength anyways, if you've been watching Rise of the Red Shirt, so... Moving on from that, we're going to talk about some of uh, Season 7 before finally getting on with Tehelna and back. So, uh, one of the things that Season 7 is going to include is a new sector block, which is not on Tribble yet, but I'll show it to you once it is. Uh, with a what's called a, a new adventure zone. And I'm not sure I like the word adventure zone. It's kind of, it kind of has connotations of more fantasy-based MMOs. But, um... You know, I don't think I think that we should. I'm one of those people who thinks that we should refrain from using bog standard MMO terms when it comes to sci-fi MMOs. And I felt this way back in PSO as well. I think I, I'm one of those people who feels that there should be a, separ a sort of separation between sci-fi and fantasy MMO terminology. You know, regarding environments that the player enters. That's just and that's more that's just more of a thematic thing for me. You know, it's more, it's more, it should, it shouldn't be called, like, an adventure zone. You should literally just call it, like, New Romulus Surface. By the way, it's called New Romulus. Uh, it's the New Romulan, it's this massive New Romulan colony that is apart from the, uh, the remnant of the Empire. And I do believe that 
Obasek has something to do about it there. Like, we may be seeing Obasek again there. I'm not sure. Um, he was at the very least mentioned in the dev blog, but this new sector block is going to have a ton of stuff. Most of it's going to be composed of patrols that are dailies that provide you with Romulan marks. And if I sound bored with this, it's because I am. Uh, Romulan marks are going to be a new currency that is going to um, not only fo uh, move forward the new reputation system, which is a way that you will be able to obtain uh, the Mark 12 STF gear, uh, but Romulan marks are also going to be replacing uh, Romulan marks or Omega marks. Was Is that going to be Omega? It might be Omega marks. Either Romulan Marks or Omega Marks are going to be replacing all the current STF currencies. So all that rare Borg salvage you've been collecting, you might want to cash it in now to get all that dilithium you were keeping your eye on. Because come the time that becomes marked, you can bet those are going to be crazy expensive. Like those dilithium crates, yeah, they're going to be really expensive after this. I don't. I haven't gotten on trouble yet, but I would. I would bet you. I would. I would. Yeah. This is. I. I have a feeling this. Pro this change is probably going to upset a lot of people who made their dilithium, who who made their dilithium grind doing STFs. This is going to be really, really bad for those people. And again, I haven't been on trouble yet, but I got a bad feeling about it. A bad feeling because this yeah so the new reputation system will uh, so, uh, somehow afford you new abilities it's been compared to multi-classing by cryptic but uh, we shall see once it hits triple now the thing the big problem I have with the Romulan marks though is because the dev blog mentions that you have to earn Romulan marks to basically advance the plot in this new sector so, not only do have they added a sector block, who, which is pure grinding, essentially. The entire sector block is focused around grinding. It's a grind block. It's a grinding block. That's what it is. So, not only have they added a sector block that's entirely focused around grinding, because they know their player base loves that, and nobody's been complaining about that for a year now. But... They are forcing you to grind for your new story content. At least according to this dev blog. You know that story content everybody's been asking for since mm, uh, mid-2010? Or earlier than that? Actually, earlier than mid-2010, people have been asking for story content. You know that story content you wanted to advance the plot of the game that's been lying stagnant? since summer of 2010 over two years now the story has gone nowhere you know that story content you wanted go grind for it <sighs> I'm done I'm done I'm, I'm off my soapbox uh, they may, like, the, the planets they've described don't describe all the planets in the sector block, so there may yet be some episodic content in there to advance the plot. We don't know yet. It's still fairly early on. So, here's hoping... Here's hoping I'm wrong, but I've got a bad fucking feeling. If anything... If I've learned anything over the course of Star Trek Online's life, it is not to underestimate Cryptic because that's kind of expecting a little too much. <laughs> you heard that right. It's it's a bad habit that Cryptic has that when they do something, it's kind of half there half there and unpolished um, and not all the time but a lot of the time that's kind of the way it goes 
So I have learned neither to expect too much or too little. I've basically learned to expect nothing from Cryptic. Because if I if I get my expectations raised for anything at all, I'm going to be disappointed. That's a sad state to, to be in for a game. Any expectations whatsoever will lead to disappo disappointment with this game. That really sucks. <laughs> the best part of this game at this point is the Foundry missions. I'm going to say that hands down. Hands down, point blank. In fact, you know what? I'm, just, I'm, I'm literally at this point just waiting for somebody... I'm surprised people haven't been doing this already. I'm just waiting for somebody to actually pick up the loose threads of Stowe's storyline and continue it themselves. Yeah, that's an idea. Hmm. Hmm. But anyways, uh, speaking of the Foundry, to Helna and back. Now that I've gone on my rant for 20 minutes about uh, the upcoming Season 7 content, uh, let's go ahead and go to Ryza to look for our wayward cartographer. And I will once again beam from my ship to my ship. I have no idea where I'm beaming to. Cryptic had this fixed a long time ago. Then again, they had the cloaking bug fixed a long time ago. And now they're calling... Well, they had the cloaking bug not fixed, but they admitted it was a bug. And it is. I will actually point you. This is one of the reasons why I have not been around lately. is because, like, cryptic shit <laughs> sometimes just drives me off the fucking wall. Like, Cryptic's attempts to rewrite history can be maddening sometimes. Just, oh, God. So, I'm going to actually point you to a uh, page... Serious second mark, yes. On StoWiki that will chronicle the history of the Klingon Empire. And in here is... Uh, cryptic basically admitting... That the uh, cloaks decloaking you on dialogue pop-ups is not is not working as intended at all. I'm also going to uh, point you to a forum topic where they quote the devs talking about this from a year ago in saying that it is not working as intended. Cryptic has a really bad habit of attempting to rewrite history with the, with their offhand comments. It's really, really, really insulting. Uh, how stupid they think their fan base is. Uh, Star Trek Excalibur is a mod. Well, it started as a mod for Bridge Commander, but it has evolved into its own game, essentially. A game based around uh, customization and being easily modded. I don't think Ryza has ever had a texture pass put on it. Looking at the sand dunes. That chair is clipping through the ground. <laughs> That's really great. So you can actually like run a fair bit out there. And, oh, look at that water. Look at that water. Welcome to 90, 1998. Um... Actually, I think 1998 had better looking water. I'm not sure. But uh, you can actually run a fair... And there's no water in the map. <laughs> oh, there's no water in the map. Oh, there's a... Oh, there's the boogie cave. I've heard there's a cave in here. But I've never actually gone to see it. Let's go check out that cave. Maybe she's in there. But yeah, you can run a fair uh, ways out there. And uh, there's no splashiness in the water. Cryptic, for some reason, uh, the, they added like a, vis a very nice visual effect to the water. And uh, ever since a recent patch, it's gone now. It doesn't work. 
I'll bet it's working as intended, though. So what's in here? Ensign, are you in here? Wow, this is... The hell is that? Wow, this is pretty useless. I wonder how many hours went into making this cave to put nothing in it. No, nothing works. If I shoot one of these, does a Chozo artifact pop out? Oh, I can't. Yep. See, speaking of things that are half done, what the hell is supposed to go on in this cave? You know, it would have been a good place to put something dodgy. <laughs> Sorry. Adjusting my microphone. It would have been a nice place to put something dodgy. You know, like, uh... I don't know. Somebody selling Venus drugs or something? Of course, that would be, like, Stow Cannon, and Cryptic isn't really interested in that. I'm sorry if I'm coming off like a really bitter bastard lately when it comes to Stowe, but it's kind of hard not to at this point. There has been so much shit, you know, that has gone on for so long that it's kind of, that you can't really ignore it. That's more pock lead than I ever wanted to see. Come on, these. Nope. It's not him. Okay. It's not her. Or is it her? <coughs> Excuse me. It's commodity broker. Um. Human beach goer. Okay. Investigate Helena's whereabouts. A note to the author. You may want to move that waypoint a little bit to the north. I'm standing here. The NPC is here. The waypoint is here with the commodity broker. You may want to move that. So let's see. Paragon? <laughs> what? Okay. What? Helna? I don't know any Helna. Okay. So, he's actually written Paragon, Rogue, and Stoic options. What? <laughs> For serious? Ah. <sighs> 
I don't know. I don't know if he rewrote that. Like, oh god, I'm flashing back to Mass Effect Three now. Shut the fuck up, Star Child. Ah. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's salt in the fucking wound. Ah. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying. One of my favorite franchises got brutally savaged by EA's poisonous influence this year, and this is a kind of a, like a too soon reminder. Who's buying that Omega DLC? Because I sure as hell aren't. Okay, all right. I don't know any hell no. Why? Hey, 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 hey. And the, uh... Why don't I believe you? And the arrow keys suddenly aren't functioning in dialogues. It's the truth. Well, maybe. Okay, it's... Wait, we got off on the wrong foot. Oh! Oh, really? Okay, so this has the same problem as Mass Effect. You either you can either play this uh, sickly sweet or as a complete asshole. There isn't. Well, I do like I do, in Mass Effect Two. There's a middle ground. I do like it in Mass. I do like Mass Effect Two for that, where it lets me play uh, the middle ground is neither like the like the ultimate. Not, uh, like I like to play it like not like. Like, I don't like to play it as Space Jesus, but I don't like to play it as, like, Space Satan either, basically. I like to play it as basically in the middle ground. You know, a, a character who may not be the nicest person in the world, but he's generally decent. But there's a limit to the amount of shit they're willing to, do, to put up with before they're going to sort things out. So, apparently... I can, I can't, I can't take the, uh, the middle ground here, apparently, because if I select rogue, the option that immediately pop, like, there's no other option other than to restart the dialogue. The only option that pops up is start talking or I'll pound your face in, which is going a bit far, just a bit. The only other option is to restart the fucking dialogue. So if you're gonna if you're gonna allow room for role play, allow room for role play is what I'm saying. Um, you know, allow allow you know, don't just go like uh, like uh, like ultimate good or ultimate e evil, basically. Like don't don't give people the options to like be a saint or an asshole. You know, just, you know, there's an in-between there that a lot of people like, that a lot of, a lot of people will function in, uh, that a lot of people's characters would function in. So, both of these things, so, like, when you go that route, when you go the route of, like, a Paragon and Renegade, basically, and you don't allow people to choose a Paragon option and then a Renegade option, or vice versa... You get people basically having to be how to ha basically having to act out of character in order to advance the storyline in order to advance your storyline. So if you're going to uh, add and again this is a pet peeve. Uh if you're going to add a role playing element to your story, l allow it to be role playing. Allow, you know, if you're like in role playing, any decision is valid. You know that's the whole point: is you're playing a role, and you know your choices matter. Your choices, any choice you make, is valid for that character, so long as it is in character. So that's what that's all I'm saying. Like my character would be a security officer. My character was a security officer before he got 
uh, unceremoniously chucked into a captain's chair by Admiral Quinn. So, of course he would grill the guy at first. You know, you know, just to get him talking. He, he, I'm not saying he'd lean on him, uh, but, because he, because he's trained, he's a professional, uh, he wouldn't lean on the guy, but he would kind of, uh, he, he would assert, be assertive, is what I'm saying. All right, so let's take the Paragon option, because I'm not about to punch a guy's face in. A Starfleet officer. Hush. The, cl the clams have ears. Hush. The clams have ears these days. Why are you so worried? Risa isn't as safe as it used to be. The Klingons are all about disruption. And what's the best way to disrupt the Federation? Security, right? But not our outposts or the borders. No, the security of our peace of mind. I need to find my officer. The Klingons have been sending operatives disguised as the usual beachgoers. Vulcans, Andorians, Tellarites. One moment you're enjoying a wave with somebody, the next they're robbing you at Disruptor Point or worse. People never see you again. You don't know who's friend or foe around here. For all I know, you could be one of them trying to set me up. Maybe you should be more worried, then? If you've lost your officer, then my guess is she's gotten in over her head. This is shady stuff, Captain. The Orion's kind of, The Orion kind of shady, sorry. And I don't feel comfortable talking to you anymore. Just tell me where I can find her. I heard mumblings about the Algeras system. Try going there. Just leave me alone, okay? Well, enjoy your vacation. Sounds like the Algeras system is our next stop, sir. But why there? Algeras is a nothing system filled with... Filling. Filled. Should be filled. Uh, at, fir at first I thought, oh crap, but no. I read it. <laughs> I actually read it right. It's written wrong. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Sounds like the Allegress system is our next stop, sir. But why there? Allegress is a nothing system, filled with nothing except a bunch of dead planets. This is bigger than just Helena now. This could be a trafficking ring, right here in our favorite vacationing spot. It's not my favorite. Trafficking would be the best case scenario. You're right. They could have just killed all these people. What if we go to Allegress and find nothing but a mass grave? Helena's going to be fine. You're right. We should stay optimistic. Alright. Alright, so now it's told us to head to the Tazzy system. We've arrived, Captain. Allegress is a star system still in the process of forming. I thought it was dead. Hmm. I find it hard to imagine there's anything here related to the whereabouts of Helna, but perhaps we should do a sweep of the system anyway. Alright, so a minor point about the design of this system. The first time I played this mission, I immediately flew into the little nebula here with a little comma ray in it. Which is enabled. Don't worry about that. Whee! Space texture glitches! The craftsmanship of Stowe, you see. Anyways. <laughs> Bitter bastard much. But uh, anyways, the moment I uh, started this mission, I flew over there. Nothing's going on. And also, a minor point. I flew over here. Where you can clearly see there's a transwarp gate on the, on the map. Although, it doesn't appear there at first. You know, I wish the map didn't do that. Like, the map is baked in somehow, and uh, it's kind of hard 
to build suspense when the map is giving away the plot, basically. There's no indications of anything within the system. I'm afraid we've reached a dead end. Perhaps not. While sweeping, I noticed the sensors picked up a burst of microwave radiation. I'm unsure of the source, but it appeared quickly and vanished, almost as if we passed through it. If I were to project a source, it would hazard a guess it might have been that micro-nebula. Perhaps we should investigate. Okay, so, yeah, I immediately searched the micro-nebula the first time I played, found nothing, came here, and was told to go back to the micro-nebula. Where am I going with this? Nowhere. I just thought it was worth being known. For a moment, I thought that was the model of Iconia, but well, whatever. Spoilers! <laughs> God, that space texture. Sir, sensor readings indicate that this is a device of Klingon design. Why it's here and what it's doing, I'm unsure, but it's definitely the source of the, of the microwave radiation, sorry. Suggestions. Sir, if I may, sometimes the best way to understand how something works is to dismantle it. Considering we have reached a dead end, I don't think we have any other option other than turning this device off. It may be the only way for us to get back on the trail. Mind you, it's a tactical officer saying this. Sometimes the only way to know something about something, sir, is to break it. Break it, and break it hard. I'm just saying. Continue. Deactivate the device. Comma ray disabled. That never gets old. That just told me a lot, sir. The device is a reservoir. It collects thermal energy from the vicinity of this molten planet and then transmits all of that energy to another destination via a microwave beam. Sir, sensors have indicated there's a large structure on the other side of the planetary system. It wasn't there a second ago. Sir, it's a transwarp conduit. How... What? Was it cloaked? That would explain a lot, sir. Cloaking something as large as a transwarp conduit would require a constant and steady supply of energy and a microwave transmitter of geothermal energy would suffice, to say the least. But what's a cloaked transwarp conduit doing in a dead star system? Let's take a look. Come on, step it up. I really like the Mako Mark, uh, the Mako set, the Mako Impulse engines. Could do without the green engine trails, they'll just look kind of goofy, but the blue exhaust trails, they look sharp. Hello? Captain, I've got a hit on the ident code for this transwarp conduit. This particular conduit was lost almost a year ago. Starfleet had planned to use it to move supplies closer to the front lines of the war, but the Klingons got wind of the operation and attacked the star system. With little supplies and the transwarp conduit damaged, we had no choice but to abandon it and fall back. Obviously, the damage wasn't too extensive. You won't believe this, but... I'm getting life signs. From a transwarp conduit? The interior of it has been dramatically expanded, sir. I think the writing on the wall is that this is the work of the Klingons. I suspect they intended to use this transwarp conduit as a base of operations for some kind of invasion. Are there any Klingons on board now? Actually, most of the life signs I'm detecting are species that are Federation members. Hail them. 
Hail them. F key. There we go. No response, sir. Perhaps their communications are down. Repair and away, team. We're in position to beam down. All right. They accept. Yeah. It's early in the morning. Loading. Good God. Finally. Okay, good. There was a glitch where you would materialize inside the floor on this map. Thankfully, that seems to have been fixed. You would little you would beam on top of this. I guess that's what how how uh, uh what was his name Havraha fixed it. Is he uh he beamed you down in front of the ramp as opposed to on top of it. Okay, you guys there? Pat my trouble. Why, Hunter, is that weapon showing when I have weapon visuals disabled? Oh, there we go. That'll do it. Hi, guys. How's it going? <laughs> Way to go, smart one. Excuse me? I thought she said you were smart. Who did? Never mind. Huh. Hmm. Oh my god. The Klingons are running a cloning program. Those bastards. Oh, that's just shiny. Kind of a stark contrast, the blue circuit line thingy with the crappy starbase walls. You guys coming? There. Good. Janky ass. So, yeah. If you switch weapons, even while they're hidden, it'll show them. Don't ask me why. Cryptic Studios. Oh, that's new. I don't remember there being, like, maddening epilepsy flashes here. Looks cool. Oh, great. Of course you came to me. Again with the Paragon stuff. <sighs> Can I ask what's going on? Alright, listen. The paraphrased version, we're all vacationers abducted by the Klingon Empire because we all have one thing in common. We're scientists and engineers. We understand Federation technology. They recovered this transwarp conduit and planned to implement it in an invasion because it would pass the detection grid. But they didn't fully understand how to put it back together after they broke it. That's why we're here. So you've been stranded here. Stranded? We've been enslaved here, held prisoner, with a full armed guard watching over our every move. It wasn't until a couple of days ago that all that changed. The Orions kidnapped a girl, not realizing she was actually a Starfleet officer. I guess I should hand it to Starfleet. You guys do breed gumption. First thing she did when she got here was take charge and stage an uprising. 
All of us waited till only a few of the Klingons were on board, and then we stormed them. We incapacitated one, and the others were tied. Yeah. We incapacitated one, and the others fled to the supply ship. Let me guess. The girl's name is Helna. Well, obviously. I mean, it's kind of obvious you're a captain and you came for her. She told us you would, anyways. Our only question was whether or not you'd be dumb enough to beam down. The Klingons stripped the communication relays. On accident, actually, which is ironic. What they didn't do on accident was install a transporter inhibitor. It lets anyone beam down, but if you want to beam up, only Klingon DNA passes the inhibitor. And worst of all is that they gave it primary access to power allocation. Life support will fail before the transporter inhibitor will. And that's what we've been fighting the past few days. Helena promised us you'd figure it out before you beamed down and got stuck here with the rest of us, but I guess she lost that bet, didn't she? And it's also why we're all pretty mad at her. Mad at Helena. With this transporter inhibitor installed, we're sitting ducks. We've rubbed the Klingons the wrong way, and they're flying back as we speak with enough forces to take back this transwarp conduit. If they can't take it back, then they'll destroy it. The lack of a plan B on Helena's part is why we've gone from being simple prisoners to having our lives looking like sand nearing the bottom of an hourglass. Maybe we should have listened to Hursley. Hursley? Daniel Hursley, an engineer from Technology Research Group. Young guy, brash, always thinks he's right. His personality made him kind of the de facto leader around here for several months. Just do what the Klingons want, he'd always say. If we get this thing working, they'll let us go home. I guess none of us really believed that at heart, which is why we all listened to Helna. I guess that was a mistake. I don't think it was. We're here now. Yeah, trapped here, and your ship in orbit is just one ship versus an entire Klingon fleet. Good luck with that. Wagalinde doesn't need luck against a Klingon fleet, dude. If you ask me, we're all gonna die. Where's Helna? Probably operations. Arguing with Hursley, I'd imagine. Yeah. So it may... So you may have noticed that uh, I have played this mission before, and when I did, the Klingon fleet that's coming to retake this station was basically a weekend stroll for the Wagolin Day, so... Although it does get pretty silly later on, you'll see why. I warned you to be more careful with the super glue. Not sure wh why that's there, but it's a little funny. Let me out! Shh! You know that's not going to happen. The Gorn stares at you quietly. <laughs> I don't think that chain belt is available to players. Neither are the chain gauntlets. Be nice if they were. Be nice if the Gorn had more Gorn specific, uh. finery. Eh, I could probably kick his ass. Shit, I could probably solo his ass. Anyways. Hello, Amia. Oh, I'm sorry about the noise. I'm Amia, a software engineer. You're Helna's captain. I'm terribly sorry you got in the middle of this. Now you're stuck here, too. I'll manage. What's the deal with him? Oh, Torn? Haha. <laughs> He's one of the Klingon forces that was left on the conduit when we kicked them out. I was able to subdue him by dropping a spanner on his head. Now the others are hoping we can use him as a bargaining chip against the Klingons. The Klingons don't take kindly to imprisonment. Which is great, because that's a Gorn. Just saying. Well, it's better than killing him. Wouldn't they see that? 
We can let him go, and they'll let us go home, and we can all be happy. Amia, why are you here? Well, he was hurt. We don't have any doctors, but a Dalton's touch is a painkiller, so I was charged with taking care of him. You know, watching him. Seriously? Yeah, it's not so bad. Sure, he growls a lot, makes a lot of noise, but he's got a soft heart. I can tell. Funny, too. We keep each other company, and he doesn't have any hard feelings against me. I know, I've asked him. Is Helena still in operations? Uh, yes. Just keep going the direction you are headed. You can't miss it. Well, this can end two ways, either horrifically or worse. Come to think of it, it's kind of irresponsible just running off and not stationing somebody to watch from your badass Starfleet Away team to watch, but I'm pretty sure they would just spawn back with you once the map refreshes. So, don't think there's anything you can do in here. Pretty sure that's a different outfit on Helena than there used to be. It, was, it used to be more of like a sports... Like, it used to be more like sportswear or something. Absolutely not, Helena. You've put us in enough date. Yeah, God. Sorry, I've just been thrown off by the fact this guy looks like Daniel Bryan. Absolutely not, Helena. You've put us in enough danger already. Please, Dan... <laughs> His name is Daniel. <laughs> I forgot about that. Please, Daniel, listen to me. I have a solution to get us out of this mess, but I'm going to need your help. <laughs> Seriously? You're on a transwarp conduit that's losing power, manned by a bunch of civilian engineers, and you're wanting me to listen to you? Please. All you've done is put our lives in danger. If everyone else had just listened to me, we wouldn't be in this mess right now. Spirits have mercy. Daniel, please listen. We have a limited window to... Captain! How long have you been standing there? Oh no, you beam down! Nice to see you too, Helna. I'd love to explain what happened, but I don't think we have the time, sir. That's fine, because I already know. I've already devised a solution. Give the Klingons what they want. And as soon as they come back and beam aboard, we'll calmly explain to them that this was all simply one big misunderstanding. Yes, the armed uprising of scientists killing their Klingon capturers. That's a misunderstanding. We can talk that through. Are you out of your mind? They're coming here to kill us! Really? Honestly, Helena, again you prove your ignorance. You act like everyone else out there. All the warmongers. The people that claim that we have to kill them all, or the only good Klingon is a dead Klingon. You really think the Klingons are that barbaric? Have you really bought into that propaganda and racism? You're more barbaric than they ever could be. You disgust me. We can settle this civilly, like in sla- Sorry, I was just saying what I was thinking. We can settle this civilly, like evolved people. I'll prove to all of you that the war isn't the answer. Daniel, I knew you were a little bit of a free spirit, but this is unwise. The spirits would implore us to examine the wider picture. Certainly violence is awful, but when faced with our own destru- Enough, Helna. We tried it your way. Now we've all suffered. I won't hear any more from you. Captain, I have a solution that may be able to get you back on the Waglinde to hold off the fleet. But Danny here isn't going to help me, so I'll need your help. Saren has found a bug in the software that ought to allow us to siphon some of the power allocation away from the transport inhibitors. It may be enough to let a handful of people punch through the field, but you'll need to talk with them to get it working. I won't let you. Can't let you do that, Tom. I would love for you to try and stop me right now. I would love it. 
Give it your best shot, tough guy. I don't think you have much of a choice. No, you don't understand. You may do all that, but it'll be too late. The Klingons wanted a working transwarp conduit, so I gave it to them. I finished the last of the repairs last night, and there's enough power stored in the generators to power a jump. What? You what? Daniel, you've doomed us all! Shut her up. I'm tired of arguing with her. The Klingons will be here soon and we'll all go home. They want the transwarp conduit to invade your home, you fucking chucklehead. This is a matter of Federation security. Under orders, that means this situation falls under Starfleet jurisdiction as a security threat. So you need to... <laughs> Ugh, Ricky getting fucking tough. So you need to sit down and shut up, because we're taking over whether you like it or not. Let's see. Oh, there's no Paragon or Renegade. There's no Paragon, so this, this let, does this let me be Paragade, finally? God. And I'm inclined to deck you for that just now. The spirits would have us seek a diplomatic solution, but we've caught the Klingons red-handed and angered them. There's no backing down from this fight, sir. Not if we want to survive. Captain, meet with Saren in power management. It's the first room back the way you came. Ask him how we can exploit the bug, and maybe we can get you back to the Waglinde, so you can get us all out of here alive. Understood. <laughs> All right, so Saren is the cat guy. Oh, hello. What, the software bug? But I thought she wanted to talk to Hursley before... Okay, you don't have to tell me twice. I can explain it to you quickly if you want. The bug lies in how the power allocation systems are networked. Primary allocation has to always travel through secondary and tertiary systems, and if you shut down tertiary systems, you stifle power flow. You don't stop it altogether, but it's kind of like... dropping a big boulder in the middle of the river. It weakens the strength of the flow. I'll work on it if you want me to, but it will take me a bit of time. If you could activate the power distribution systems in the center of the room while I exploit the bug, I'd be much appreciative. Okay, I see. Sir? Oh good, my combat still works. Has Saren started exploiting the bug? Excellent, but I have something else I could use your help with. The guys over here in operations are telling me they're picking up sensor ghosting outside. I don't want to say it's the Klingons, but if it is, then they've arrived early. I think the station controllers on the other side of the transwarp conduit may have noticed something that could be of use. But since communications are down, I need you to relay what they know to me through our comm badges. So now you have to go all the way back to the start. Hi, big guy. Can't wait to kick your ass. Is there, is there a different dialogue here? No. Still having trouble with the super glue. I'm wondering, would they even use super glue in the, in the 25th century? Wouldn't they uh, just be using like some kind of fusion device? Okay, can't talk to you. Hey guys, what's going on? Captain, the transwarp conduit has opened a portal. Klingons are decloaking. Their weapons are charged. What? Oh, that was unceremonious. 
Oh, we can talk now? Oh, okay, get your ass back. You didn't know. You didn't even say that. You just said the Klingons were showing up. Although, that's fine, I guess. That's fine. You don't always need a transition that says, that gives them, like, where they say in, like, a hundred words, sir, beam back. Oh. Uh, I guess not. The Klingons have beamed down! Or it wasn't transition at all. It was literally just refreshing the map. Well, let's kick some ass. Oh, get off me. Get off me. Get off. Okay. Hi. I never wanted this to happen. I just wanted to go home. Can you believe that in the short time I knew her, Helena convinced me of the afterlife? How do I return the favor? By helping Hursley fix this transwarp conduit and dooming us all to death. I won't let this be my legacy. These are the generators that have stored the power. Shut them down and the power will drain quickly. The gate will close before their full inversion force can get... Invasion. Inversion. Well, there went all the dramatic tension from that. The gate will close before their full invasion force can get through. I hope the spirits have mercy on me. Blah. All right. That's pretty unsafe. It's like the Normandy's engine room. <sighs> of course, the fact that the control room for that for the conduit is that deadly does not surprise me in the least. This was Starfleet built, after all. Well, I guess they're not having trouble with that super glue anymore. The Gorn, look! Oh. The Gorn took a bit, took a bite out of Daniel to preserve some kind of modesty for the lady. Torn, no, but you said you. Why? Her wounds were extensive, Captain. They're bites. Hursley, he let the Gorn out. 
Captain. We can't underestimate the amount of damage a Gorn can do to a group of civilians. We... Helna! As you were, peeps. All right. It's time to kick some Gorn ass. Hi, Torn. Thanks for coming when you did. I think Saren had enough time to exploit the bug and get us the drop in power we need to punch about five transport signatures past the inhibitor. You'll need to walk up to the console in the center of the room and disengage the power when you're ready. I know you want to take me along, sir, but it's too risky. If we add another signature, it runs the risk of losing one of us. And I don't want to endanger any more of the crew. Get up there. Take command of the Wuglinde and save us all. Spirits protect you. May the force be with you. Just putting that out there. Disengage the systems. Captain, the transport inhibitor is weakened. We can beam up on your command. All right. Here's the inside of my face. Star Trek Online. Load! Thank you. God. Pretty sure this is new. We're a lot better off with you at the con, sir. But unfortunately, the gate has been activated. Nell's not going to like that. I'd recommend we fire on the gate and destroy it, but we can't do so with all the civilians trapped on board. The Klingons themselves will likely fire upon the conduit for vengeance. He actually says the irony, but I didn't. All right. Welcome to hell, bitch! My point defense system didn't really kick in. Not sure about... I'm not sure what happened there. The point defense system should have, like, eaten them and shat them out. Minor damage. It seems the first two groups of ships that attacked were fairly weak. That certainly can't be the full strength of their fleet. But if they continue to attack us two at a time like this, I'm concerned we may not make it. Oh, unclench your ass cheeks, Rick. We'll be fine. I recommend we take this opportunity to reroute power to shields and make any makeshift hull repairs we can.
Hi. Reports of injuries coming into sick bay, Captain. We've got everything from plasma burns to broken bones. If this keeps up, we may not have enough people to maintain the battle stations. I've got hull breaches on decks nine and deck seven. Engineers are injured. It's taking everything I have to reroute systems away from the dam from damaged or missing parts of the ship in time. She's not going to hold together much longer. People, they barely scratch us. Good God, I know you're bored. You barely have to fix the ship. Ooh, that's a boar toss. I know you barely have to fix the ship most of the time. It's just that badass, but you know, you don't have to make shit up, Locke. Wow, this is the pride of the Klingon fleet. Getting its ass kicked by a 50-year-old starship design. Bye! Okay, Locke, what's not wrong with the ship now? Is that it? We survived? Sir, a Klingon vessel is decloaked. It suffered engine failure. I think it was hit by a stray shot during the battle. <laughs> that sucks. We will move in stealthily and take them by surprise. Oh, God! So what are you? What are you? What are you? Is that a carrier? No, it's not a carrier. It's a uh, it's a battle cruiser, maybe. I think it's a battle cruiser. A heavy cruiser? Heavy battle cruiser? Looks kind of like a Katinga. Might be the same kind. Or maybe the same tier of ship. Whatever. Hello, how are you doing today? Barbaric and self-righteous through and through. Willing to finish off a defenseless vessel? What a grand warrior you are. Luckily, I've taken matters into my own hands. I've beamed the remaining occupants of the conduit aboard this vessel. Attempt to destroy us and you'll destroy your precious engineers. Are you hiding behind civilians? <laughs> you dare insult my honor! There are no civilians in total war. Only pawns on the battlefield. So the answer is yes, then? You're hiding behind civilians? Just because you're crazy and trying not to admit that they're civilians doesn't change the fact that they're civilians! <laughs> oh, God, the portrayal of the Klingons in this game is so fucking... St ah, ah. It's a general thing, too. Like if you really like if Cryptic really gave half a shit about doing an actual storyline with the Klingons, it would probably be calling them out on their shit. You know? Like the Klingons themselves calling the leadership of the Empire out on its shit. You know, like how like how uh, like how for example Jumpok says only in battle is a Klingon truly Klingon. Like you'd have like the entire working cast of the Empire suddenly up in arms basically telling Jim Pock to go fuck himself. That's how I like to look at it. That's how I, like, I, like I have a Klingon on my ship. That's part of the reason he's there. That's kind of how I roleplay there being Klingons in Starfleet, is the working class of, like, the Klingon Empire. The people who keep the Empire running, basically, basically going, you know what? Fuck you too to Jim Pock. 
You know, if they gave if they gave half a shit about doing a Klingon storyline, it would be the peop the, the the citizenry of the Empire calling the Empire out on their shit. Because, for example, the, the Klingon Defense Force, the honorable warriors of the KDF, now include Orion pirates, uh, Lethian and Nashikan mercenaries, and Gorn slaves. Now, ask yourself for a moment. Now, you're a Klingon. You're uh, you're an uh, you're a warrior who his entire his or her entire life have lived by a code of honor. Now ask yourself: You're serving with mercenaries, cutthroats, and slaves. Are these people going to fight with as much honor and valor as you would expect a Klingon to? Not a fucking chance. If they were as even. If they had even half of an interest, and it's not, it doesn't even, like, take a rocket scientist to figure this out. If they had an even passing interest in telling a decent story about the KDF, that's where it would be. <sighs> I'm sorry, moving on. The next move is yours. Sir, the Klingon vessel has another transporter inhib inhibitor installed. I'm inhibitor? Yep. However, it's malfunctioning, and I don't think the Klingons are aware. It was supposed to keep us from beaming down, but we'll have no problem getting down there and taking them by surprise. We've assembled a boarding party. Alright, it's the same boarding party as before! Holy shit! Oh, let's see. Uh, we're gonna take... Ring Chal. Chal can teach these Klingons a thing or two. Oh god, another monster. Loading screen! I swear to god, my computer isn't this low. Or, or this slow. It's not. It's it's the loading. Oh god, the loading is Star Trek Online. Oh god. Oh, it happens so often and it's so lengthy. Jesus. Okay, so the good news is the Klingons have their cargo hold filled with blood wine, not weapons. This may be the very supply vessel that the original guards fled to. And the bad news? It's still only blood wine. Where's Helna? I'm reading life signs consistent with the species known to be Federation members on the other side of the ship, sir. However, the amount of resistance we're going to run into is massive. The good news is I don't think all of them suspect us yet. It's the small blessings. Oh, I'm sure even when they do suspect us, it's not going to be very significant resistance. Alright, Chal. Re ready to kick some ass? Hi, guys. I am Captain Gorth, commander of this vessel. You've accomplished a bold move, but to be honest, I don't care. I'm giving you one chance to flee for your lives like the cowards you are. If you do not take it, then you will resign yourselves to your last moments in this world. I kind of like the odds stacked against me. Makes for a nice change of pace, actually. You Starfleeters never were that smart. Starfleeters? That's what we're called, Starfleeters? You Starfleeters! You damn Starfleeters and your stupid recklessness and your honorable combat and your... Wait. Have a grenade! Case in point, the Orion enemies are called Thugs and Brutes.
You know, these guys are not really driven by honor. They don't they couldn't give a shit about living by a code. They're pirates. They're criminals. And the KDF is now full of them. So ask yourself, how honor driven is that is the KDF at that point? Shit. One of the Klingon missions has you mercilessly torturing a Federation captain. Like, legitimately torturing them. And then executing a ship probably full of thousands of prisoners. A defenseless sh a ship that is incapable of defending itself at that point. It has surrendered. And the noble Klingon warriors not only torture the commanding officer, but kill the entire crew. Even among the Klingons, that would be a moment where you would look at your commanding officer. Like the, there is, like, the Klingon storyline doesn't actually get good until the Fekleri missions. And those are only, like, what, two, three missions? And the entire Klingon storyline? And the rest of it's just faction agnostic stuff with the exception of Alphas. Which is awesome. I will admit that. I think I'm working up a sweat. Yeah, even among the Klingons, that would be a moment where you would look at your commanding officer and decide whether or not you wanted to execute the some bitch. Because even the Klingons follow have to follow some kind of article of war. You know this because they have legal counsel. Uh, because they have legal counsel devoted to this sort of thing, as was shown in Deep Space Nine. I have had enough of you! Come on, let's end this! Come on! Come on! Okay. Oh, look, more Gorn. Again, the Gorn are a servitor race. These guys aren't going to give a shit about honorable combat. Really, I'm not... I'm really surprised that there isn't a Klingon story arc devoted specifically to a Gorn Rebellion. There you go. There's another great story idea that you've never used for the Klingon storyline. There's something else you could have done that's a no-brainer. The fucking Gorn Rebellions that are constantly referred to. This isn't, this isn't rocket science, cryptic! There's a wall here. 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 You don't realize how much I've missed this. I've grown weary of pushing pads, of wrangling weak and pathetic creatures like cattle. I've yearned for this since I've gotten here. The rush of it, the thrill of the smell of burning flesh, the red blood staining the corridors, the heat of bodies turning the battlefield into a sauna. Come to me. Let me feel the last beat of your heart as I hold it in my hands. Um. I'm sorry. I think we're mixed up a little bit here. I'm not available, Captain. I, I, I'm flattered, but, you know, I'm not really... I, I'm kind of, I kind of got got something going on, you know. I've I've got the job, and it's kind of, it's kind of. Oh, just back the fuck off me! You know, I've I've got the there's the job, and and you know it's a lot of responsibility, and it, it just takes me a while, and I'm not really emotionally available right now. 
to anyone. Not exactly on the market. So if you could just fucking go away. Thank you. You boarded the ship! Thank goodness we can finally go home. How are you abducted? She's an abducted alien. I just re realized that. Anyways. Honestly, it's a complete fluke that I'm here. I was talking to this cute guy and I wanted to impress him, but stellar cartography isn't exactly the most glamorous occupation on a starship. So I told him that I was a transwarp theorist. The next thing I know, I'm waking up aboard the transwarp conduit, being yelled at to help them fix it. If Daniel already had most of the work done, if you hadn't arrived when you did, I might not have been here to save. But the spirits work in mysterious ways. If I hadn't been abducted, the Klingons may have mounted a full-scale invasion. May the spirits bless you, all of you. Uh-huh. Let's just go home, Helda. Alright. Uh, last time when I uh, played this mission, I gave it a 5 out of 5. That's That rating stands. Uh, to hold on back, it's a, it's a good mission. It's certainly one of the better ones uh, in the Foundry. Uh, it doesn't do any... It's not... Although, he did add a couple cool things. Like, I, like I think the lighting in that one room... Uh, he he improved it quite a bit. I do like that you beam now onto the actual floor of the level and not onto the ramp he's placed in there because that was a bit awkward uh, before. Uh, you would you could beam inside the ramp sometimes, so you'd have to beam down and beam back up and beam down, beam back and beam back up until everybody was was uh, was on top of the ramp instead of inside of it. Um, so I like, I like that, I like that he fixed that. Uh, I, I like the lighting of that engine room. It's still a great mission. It's just not, it, it doesn't do anything, uh, spectacularly in a technical sense, but it doesn't, but a good mission doesn't really have to, although it's still cool to see at sometimes. So five stars still great mission, really fun. Uh, get off the ramp. Oh. My god, Lima is Spider Woman. Anyways, um... Yeah, let's get out of here. And that was to Helna and back. Next week we'll be doing animations with Helna. And uh, we're going we're gonna to beat this Helna horse until it's dead. <laughs> no, I'm joking. They're, they're still good. They're really good missions uh, coming. Uh, and uh, as we go through them, you'll probably start seeing why this character has become uh, a canon part of the game world. And I'll show you. Because uh, the astrometric scientist, like uh, once the DOF system was released, uh, while they were still adding rewards to each of the exploration clusters, uh, they added Helna to the Arcanus arm as the officer you got through uh, Renown in the Arcanus arm. So now you actually do have Helna serving aboard your ship as an astrometric, uh, as a stellar cartographer. Or, uh, the Doff is an astrometric scientist. Um, and she reduces uh, your transwarp ability, the recharge time on transwarp, by quite a bit. So she's really handy to bring along. So, yeah. 
that was to Helna and back. And this has been Star Trek Online, Rise of the Red Shirt. I'll see you guys next week with Animations with Helna. So, later!